Era. It is Canada Reads Long List. It has been announced. Woo woo. Very exciting. And it's funny, somebody put something like it's the greatest day of the year or something on their Instagram, which made me laugh because I thought it totally is yeah. for book nerds, Canadian book nerds, it's 100% the best day. So we're going to talk today about what we think will make the short list. And as you may all know, it's based on nothing but our own opinion <laughs> with almost no input from any source, kind of. Well, maybe, we'll see. But I do want to say a couple things. One, that I've read two of the books on the list, so I'm kind of excited. I'm hoping they both make it so that that's two less books I have to read in a really quick period of time. <laughs> and then also as an American, I've already checked our uh, catalog here uh, in Michigan, and I have access to nine out of the 15. So that's pretty good. I feel yeah. pretty good about that. So, But what we're going to do is we will take turns each of us will give a title that we think will make it on the short list in no specific order, just random order, and then maybe give just a little hint about what the book is about. And and just for clarification, I'll be using the posts from the CDC, C, CDC, oh my gosh, COVID. Okay, <laughs> CBC <laughs> Books Instagram account where they've kind of put a little summary for all the titles. So Tara. I will let you go first. What is your number one or your first choice for the shortlist? Okay, this was a very daunting task. So this is my first year doing this with you. Um, and it was very daunting to look at a list of 15 and just kind of it felt randomly choose five. They gave a little hint in their post that the long list were books to inspire readers to reflect on community and who we are in the world we live in. So I took that as a touch point and I kind of grouped the 15 books into five groups of three Ooh. that I thought were kind of similar in um, uh, maybe theme or even at like the community that they uh, were presenting and went with, it could be totally wrong. I have no reason <laughs> to think that was it or any, you know what I mean? Like, cause we don't know who do the defenders are. So I just needed something. So the first book I chose was Driven by Marcello Di Cintio. And so it's just a series of interviews with North American taxi drivers, their backgrounds ranging from the Iraqi National Guard to the Westboro Baptist Church to an arranged marriage that left one woman stranded in a foreign country. Marcello seeks out those missed conversations, revealing the untold lives of the people who take us where we want to go. I went with this one, one, because it's a memoir, and two, because it's a community of people uh, that have a similar job. Like, you know, like we always think of communities as families or friends, but this is a community of like-minded uh, careers. So I, and a career that I think not a lot of us even really think about. We take for granted. So I and the description of it sounded very interesting and is a book that I want to read. Okay, that's an excellent choice because um, anyone who is familiar with our podcast may know that we actually interviewed Marcello about that very book. I read it. I loved it. It is a fantastic account of really. And I think you kind of nailed it, but they share a job, right? Not necessarily a culture or an experience, but they share this this job. And so he does tell this great these great stories, and it really is about community. So darn it all, I didn't list that one, <laughs> but it's a brilliant uh, example of community. And I have to say too. That was really smart because when you told me earlier today that they had written it, oh, this little blurb about community, I said, what? Because I don't read directions very well. So I went back and read it and went, aha, I think that is their theme. And I think Driven nails that. So I think that's an excellent first first num uh, first book. So Thank you. I'm good. surprised you didn't choose it. So now I'm really interested to see what <sighs> your five are. I know. And I was I had it on my list initially. And then when I went back and looked at everything again... I sort of feel like nonfiction doesn't always get the proper respect. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has one in the recent past, but I just don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so I'll start with mine and then we'll go through okay. it. Okay. 
So my first one is uh, Five Little Indians. And for full transparency, I'm currently reading it and I have like 30 pages to go and I wanted to just not work today so I could finish reading it, (laughs) but I will finish it tonight. And this one is about uh, the story of five children who were in residential school in British Columbia and their adult lives and the impact that being residential school survivors, what that looks like. And I picked that one because I think especially uh, after the past, you know, last year when a lot of children were found, unmarked graves, I feel like somebody needs to, that kind of needs to be part of the discussion this year, especially because I think it seems to me from what I read is that maybe it helped open the eyes of Canadians across the country to what happened in a different way than just maybe the Reconciliation, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, et cetera. I feel like that was almost a more, well, heartbreaking and tragic story. So that's kind of why I picked that book. I feel like, I think it's a topic that needs to be, or should be addressed maybe this year, or may want to be addressed this year. How's that? So good choice. Um, my second choice, I'm going to go with, well, not second, I, I, they're not ranked, because this one is actually number four on my list, but I'm going to slip it in now because of your choice, that your first choice. But I chose All the Quiet Places by Brian Thomas Isaac, which is also about the effects of um, colonialism and residential schools on an entire family, like what happens, the multi-generational effect. And this one I thought sounded really good. And I chose it because family as community in this one. Yeah. Well, I will just say that was also on my list as well. And I sort of felt like, because I feel like this topic just really, especially because of what happened last year and even towards the end of of last year, I feel like it really, one of those two books may make it for that very reason. And I think it's really an important read for everybody. So I also picked all the quiet places. So, okay. So go ahead down with your number three. Okay. So my next one is uh, Satellite Love by Genki Ferguson. So this one sounds very intriguing. I'm not sure if it's a, a Rebecca book. <laughs> it's a, <laughs> I, and I'd actually, I, heard an interview with the author probably about a year ago or when the book first came out and I was intrigued by it then and then I forgot about it so I'm happy to see it back here as a little reminder to myself and essentially just a little quick rundown it looks um 16 year old Anna who lives in Japan is an outcast at school and lonely and she's living with her grandfather she cares for him and then everything changes the evening the Low Earth Orbit Satellite, or LEO, returns her gaze and sees her as no one else has before. And then LEO is called down to Earth. And I thought, that it sounds like a love story. And I chose this one because that it is a love story, but also it sounds like it might be more about a chosen community. So not about the community that you're born into but the one that you choose for yourself, maybe knowingly or unknowingly. And it sounds just, a, it's got like a fantasy twist to it. And I, I do like fantasy. Although that is one that was not on my list. And mostly because I know this is, seems so just kind of silly to say this, but sometimes in the competition, I think as a defender, if you pick a book that has no connection to Canada, that's always the argument they make. The other defenders. Well, it's not about Canada. So then it almost sets the tone for that's the point they always go back and hit all the time. So that's kind of why I didn't pick that. But I now you make me want to read that one. So I might, I might, might, I might read that one. Okay. (laughs) Well, it's not on my list though. My next one, my third one is a book that I have to now find it on my list here. It's Scarborough. And I'm not say- sure if I'm saying it correctly, if people say Scarborough, Scarborough. Scarborough. That's what I say. Scarborough. Okay, I wasn't sure if it had, because you know how like people say New Orleans and it's New Orleans, New Orleans. Yeah. So 
Anyway, so basically it's pretty obvious. It's about the diverse people who make up the community of Scarborough and kind of their their life and happenings. And back in 2019, David Sherry Andy wrote Brother, which was set in Scarborough. Mm-hmm. And I actually really, I like that book. There was a slight issue I had with it, but overall I liked the book. I liked reading about Scarborough because it was a new community for me. Like I didn't really know anything about it. And I've read a lot about Scarborough since. So I just sort of feel like it, it's such a diverse community. It has people from all over the world, I think, who sort of settle there, at least initially. And until they sort of maybe sometimes I think sort of make their way out or not. But I kind of thought that one because I think it's such a unique community. So that is why I picked Scarborough. I second that. That was my next choice as well. Two. Yeah, I know. Yes. And I chose for the same reason because it's a diverse geographic community that I was like, just sounds really good. I've heard great things about the book. But even aside from that, I'm like, that's a book I want to read. I guess this will be my number four title is now this one. Again, I hate to say it, but I picked another one that I feel like, again, is my topic that I think people are going to want to discuss this year. And that was Life in the City of Dirty Water, uh, Mm -hmm. which is a memoir about a, it says here, uh, it covers Clayton Thomas Muller's life from playing with toy planes as a way to escape the intergenerational pain of Canada's residential school system to spending time in juvenile detention and later becoming an activist in the fight against colonial racism and violence. And that is such a important topic that has been really in the news, I mean, for the last few years, um, for sure. So I kind of felt like that it, again, it's, I feel like one of those three books that I've mentioned I think one of the three at least will make it in, if not two of them, but we'll see. So that was my number four. Uh, My final book is What Strange Paradise by Omar El Akkad. And I read this one a few months ago and I loved it. And it's about a little boy. I can't remember his age because it's been a few months. Uh, He's young. I'm thinking be eight, 10 years old. He's a refugee. And he's found by a teenage girl who helps him. So it's a beautiful book. It also has, I found, a little bit of a mythic flair to it that I really liked, or a fantastic flair. And it's just an individual making it through a difficult situation to only face like an uncertain future. Like, you know, like he's making it through one situation. And what happens then? I, it's funny, I really wanted to pick that one, but the only reason I didn't is for, well, kind of two reasons. One, American War was a runner up a few years ago. So I kind of thought, well, maybe they won't, I don't know how often they do like repeat authors, like kind of close together, you know, through the years. Yeah. So I wondered about that. And also it's gotten so much, it just won the Giller Prize. So I sort of felt like maybe people will feel like everybody's read it and everybody knows it and if they're trying to introduce you know different authors I don't know so that one I'm not sure but if it makes it I will not be surprised at all and it's definitely one I want to read because I loved American War I thought his writing was just so beautiful oh yeah and I agree with everything you say like I was tempted to not choose it for that very those very reasons that you said like it's gotten a lot of accolades it's out there in the press and it is nice for books that are less well-known, authors that are less well-known to get more, uh, to be featured. Yeah. But I just, I love this book so much that I would love to see it on the list. And my last choice is We Two Alone by Jack, I don't know if it's Wong or Wang. And it's a collection of short stories. It said, it's set over a century and spanning five continents. We Two Alone traces the evolution of the Chinese immigrant experience. And I thought, again, this is really about community and the fact that it's short stories. I thought it could tell a lot of different type of stories about community in a different way. So it's not just a linear sort of novel or memoir. It could take us in a lot of different directions. And I don't know, this is my big risk uh, choosing this one, but I thought 
Has a short stories collection ever been on the short list? I don't, I don't know, know either. if that is interesting. Yeah. So that's why, yeah, that's why I thought, hey, if they really could be telling many different types of mm-hmm. community stories with this. Now, if community is not the theme, <laughs> <laughs> all, our, all our options are like, what? <laughs> I'm going to play the devil's advocate with you right now, Rebecca. Because your last choice is not a, uh, oh, yeah, there is a little bit of a Canada, one of the stories. I partly, the, the reason I thought about it, even though it's not deeply connected necessarily to Canada, I thought, obviously, the Asian community is very large, in especially like in the major cities in Toronto and, and in Vancouver and everything. Uh, also, I thought, too, with the whole Asian racist stuff that's been going on in the news as well over the last uh, year specifically. I think, I don't know if it's been a full year or not, but again, I thought this was another way to share their community story and maybe help turn some people's Mm -hmm. point of view around maybe. I don't know, but that's another reason why I brought it or picked it. So thanks for bringing that up because that's why I wanted to add that too about why I picked it. So yeah, we will find out. I think it is on the 26th that the shortlist gets announced. So we will see if we were right at all, but we share two yep. titles. And so I'm pretty confident that many of our titles will make it <laughs> onto the shortlist. <laughs> it was, I won't be, I will be disappointed, but I also won't be because there were a lot of other books in there. Like I've, I've already added most of the books to my to be read list because I'm like, that sounds really good. But I'm like, it's not, I think it's not quite what is good for Canada reads. I don't like that term, but you know what I mean? So there are a lot of other contenders here. So I won't be surprised to see other ones pop up. I just really want to see what the other, what they're going to be. Any idea who you think might, the defenders might be at all in nope. any way, shape or form? Not a clue. No. Yeah. <laughs> I wish they would just, you know, again, I've said this before, but I wish they would tell us early on because I feel like we could, you know, well, maybe that's why, because then we would be able to make our picks a little better, perhaps. I'm not really sure if we knew exactly who was going to be on the show, but I cannot wait. I like the theme. I like the books overall. You know, last year I struggled quite a bit, but this year I'm really excited for so many good, great titles and can't wait to get moving on this. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm going to uh, visit my library's website this this evening, actually, and get some of them on, added onto my wait list. I did that already, actually. At, um, yeah, I put a hold on two of them because two of them in Michigan, we had, there were only like two or three copies. So I thought I better grab a copy now just in case mm-hmm. it makes the short list. And at least then I have access to it without having to purchase it. I mean, not that I don't want to purchase it, but it'll make it easier for me to be able to get it quickly and, and read it. So yeah. yeah. So, so did you start with books from your short list? I picked the ones, again, I think I picked, I did get Scarborough was one of them. Yeah. And and I think the, All the Quiet Places, those were the two I put holds on because, again, they weren't there weren't that many copies that I could have access to. And we two alone, I think, we had no circulating copies. So some of them we just don't, we don't have and I would have to purchase them. But I have a, yeah. I have a $50 gift card from Amazon that I got. So I thought, well... That will maybe buy me two books. <laughs> so yeah. at least, yeah, maybe hopefully no more than two will be, uh, will be on the list that I can't get access to. So we'll see. Awesome. So both of us will see all of you on the 26th. See you then. 